up this window a second. It feels like only moments ago that I was bringing you the first one and to set some context. The McLaren have only ever made three LT models in its entire history. The first one being the major big daddy which started the lineage, which was the McLaren F1 long tail, famous for its incredible Le Mans victories. Um, and then many years later, they went and relaunched the brand LT with the 675 LT, which if you were a subscriber to this channel last year, I was the owner of a 675 LT for 12 months. We did 10,000 miles in it. And if you remember my very first driving experience with the 675 LT Spider, which by the way is the third LT they've made. You might recall it reconfiguring my smile glands. It was uh, a real breakthrough moment for me as to what was possible in the world of road going supercars. They really started to blur those lines between super and hypercar with the LT in my experience. And now here we are. I, once again, they are now applying the LT ethos to their fourth car which is manifested in the 600 LT. So there's a little bit of history. Uh, I'm going to pull forward these Senna carbon seats. So what's it all about? The focus of this car is all about the driver, the driving experience. There's been lots of changes which I always find are greater than the sum of their parts but let's go with the first big one which is weight saving. 100 kilograms of weight savings. Dry weight, this car is 1,247 kilograms. To be able to have shaved 100 kilograms off a car that was already incredibly light, don't forget this is rocking a full carbon tub, this car has always punched way above its weight for its class anyway. However, to shave another 100 kilograms and give it the best part of 600 horsepower, the power to weight ratio on this is going to be outstanding. But the ethos for me is what excites me the most. And this is what is the most important. They put it very much much on the way this car is going to make the driver feel. The benchmark for this car, the car that they put it up against and marked as the car that they really want to emulate and get the closest to, is the 675LT. Those words to come out of McLaren's mouth make me so happy because the LT is one of the best cars I have ever driven. And the componentry which added up to that experience were things like stiffer engine mounts. That might not sound like a big deal, but what it does is it with our hearts, don't we? They're not essential tools, they're fabulous things. The car is eight millimeters lower. It is definitely designed to handle a lot better. We have hollowed out, anti-roll bars, which are, are also contributing to lighter weight. The uh, speech that I've had from McLaren is that this car is very much uh, track focused. So they've even gone so far as to carry the brakes from the McLaren 720S and put them onto this car. Not only are they huge, but they're also light. The stopping power of the 720 is one of my favorite features of, of that car. The fact that they've gone and put this on a car which is even lighter is going to be phenomenal. Together with that, there's also a redeveloped unique compound tire specifically for the 600 LT, which has given the car a lot more grip. McLaren are saying that on certain circuits, this car is faster than the 675 LT. If you've seen the videos, you'll know how daft that is, but to have that in a package like this, is incredible. McLaren just seem to be able to punch above their weight segment every single time. Really impressive so far. Going back to lightweight. Now the car as standard will come with the sports seats, which you will have seen in my LT. They are a carbon bucket seat. But if you're really taking this lightweight ethos seriously on this car, uh, it's all about the center seats. Now, the fact that they've made these available for the LT version of this car is on the one hand, absolutely incredible. On the other hand, I thought they might have reserved exclusivity for these seats in the Senna, considering that's their sort of flagship hypercar. However, most of us who absolutely will not be able to even get anywhere near a Senna now has the option, if you're gonna be one of the lucky people to get their names down on one of these limited edition cars, to be able to spec the ultra lightweight Senna seat. Let me tell you something, when you sit in these, again, if you've watched my Senna video, I go on about the significance of these seats and how light they are. You see this edge here, how thin that is? That's the thickness of the entire seat. 
all the way around. And the way it hugs you, it's this reassuring body glove of carbon that just says, yes, let's go and chase some lateral Gs, which on these stickies with this added downforce, which we'll get onto shortly, it's gonna lap like a joyous machine. So carbon panels, so much more carbon on this car. The Aero generates 100 kilograms of downforce at 155 miles per hour. Um, but don't forget that while in this realm of crazy figures that are coming out of the hypercar world, 100 kilograms of downforce may not sound that much, but don't forget they've also shaved 100 kilograms of weight as well. So all of these components added up together, it's all about experiences greater than the sum of their parts. Sometimes you can read down a sheet of tweaks and changes and think, mm, they sound like nice to haves. When you connect with these things, and I found this out firsthand in the 675 LT, when you really engage with these things, they add up to such a sensory experience. Believe that just these tweaks and changes have made what will undoubtedly feel like a totally different car from a 570S. This car uh, doesn't actually have all of the options on. With what they've learned from the 675 LT, they're carrying a lot of carbon components over on the exterior. This car will also be available with full carbon exposed roof and uh, side rails, as well as those really cool wheel arch louvers in carbon, which were also available as an optional extra on the 675 LT. The diffuser on this thing is unbelievable it actually makes the rear of the 675 lt look a little bit tame and i remember when that car launched thinking that is one of the most aggressive looking cars that i'd seen on the road madness to think that their sort of baby lt as it were uh is looking this aggressive the contribution from the rear diffuser towards the downforce levels of this car are almost disproportionate compared to every other aero update obviously the majority of it is coming from the fixed rear wing um, but the size of that diffuser just look at it. The sculpture on it's incredible. And those slats are so defined. The fact that they've got this aero channeling where they've sculpted the sides of the rear bumper to expose the tire. It just screams race car DNA. Together with that fixed wing and that massive sculpted diffuser, it now looks like a proper piece of kit that is very much track focused. Now let's just talk about that fixed wing and the most iconic and I guess important feature of this car, which is the top exit exhausts. Now I've only ever seen that, and forgive me if there's historic cars which have this top exit exhaust system, but the most prominent car that comes to mind that has top exit exhaust is of course the Porsche 918 Spyder, which is a thoroughbred hypercar. Two reasons for the application of that. One thing that McLaren do very well is that while something will look awesome, there's always a purposeful practical side to it. By having the exhaust exit out of the top of the engine bay, uh, it allows you to get rid of a very significant chunk of the exhaust pipe, effectively contributing towards that 100 kilogram weight saving. The other point which is very cool, is of course that the exhausts are effectively just there. They're no longer right out of the back of the car. And so thinking about the fact that they've also reduced the weight and thickness of the glazing in this car to once again contribute to the weight saving, uh, you're now also gonna be able to absorb a lot more sound. The most of which will be from those two incredible tailpipes, which you can also see absolutely smack bang square on in your rear view mirror. Speaking with the engineers who have been working on the development of this car, those two tailpipes spit flames constantly. Let's face it, in terms of sense of occasion, having flames in your rear view mirror, it just makes me tingle just thinking about it. So yes, they're right there. Uh, the other interesting piece of design, which we haven't seen on a wing before like that, is this central section, which is coated in a uh, heat resistant coating. Obviously the reason for that is because it's directly next to the exhaust outlets, which I'm told at full speed can get up to 200 degrees centigrade. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work out when you pull in to the pits after a heavy drive. If you decide to just lean on your wing and chat to your mate, you might have an extra warm hand. I don't know, but I'm told that that surface coating does dissipate heat incredibly quickly. So maybe you'll drive in and it'll be totally fine. That aside, it also looks really interesting and I've never seen anything quite like it on a road car. So once again, all of these little bits and bobs adding to the theater, very cool. So how much different is this to a 570S? Well, McLaren is saying that 
the overall component changes are 23% new. So it's not an entirely new car, but then again, neither was the 675 LT by any stretch. In fact, when you sat in the 675, you would obviously be forgiven for thinking you were in a 650S. It wasn't until you started it up and the more solid engine mounts and transmission mounts channeled more vibration from the engine into the tub and through your derriere, through your spine and through the steering wheel that before you'd even turned a wheel, you knew you were in something special. This is gonna be doing exactly the same thing. In fact, because this is the newer tub, which is from the 570S, I'm told that they had to make the engine mounts even stiffer than in the 675 LT to make that effect even greater because this tub has such composure. So you might be wondering why they're calling this an LT. Uh, well, at first glance, it may not look longer, but it's actually 47 millimeters longer at the rear and 27 millimeters longer at the front. So it generally is a longer car. But the significance of LT is, think of it more now as McLaren's brand for their lightweight driver-focused cars. Uh, this is significant because the fact that they've now launched this as their second tier within the LT brand has really solidified LT as something more meaningful and purposeful. It's now starting to develop its own series. For me, on a personal standpoint, uh, I've, I've had the grace and fortune of being lucky enough to drive every McLaren which they have built so far. And what I've always found myself saying is despite the fact that they have 720S, LT, 570, the 570 platform for me, I found has always been almost the most complete and appealing considering that ultimately if you wanna own one of these, you have to part with money, right? When you look at the value of these things and how far above their weight they punch and the driving engagement that they offer, speaking of which, this still also maintains a hydraulic steering rack, so we're gonna be having some great feedback through this. Yeah, for me, the 570 has been their most compelling car. The fact that they've gone and applied the LT ethos to that platform, bumped it up some power, and now it's the 600 LT, that really excites me. You know, I remember when I drove 570 for the first time, I thought there's two things that this thing is crying out for. First of all, Spider, which they did because the tub is so capable that when you take the roof off, it's just a delight to engage in the uh, ambience of, of this car further. And then an LT version, and here we are. And I'm really, really excited. I cannot wait to drive this because they're, they're such a fun car. So while we're up to 600 PS in power, we're also 620 Newton meters of torque. Yeah, this thing's gonna have some serious punch. What that translates to is zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.9 seconds. So zero to 60 is gonna be around about 2.8. That's genuine absolute, I was gonna swear then, I was gonna swear. That's nuts. <laughs> Do you, listen, don't forget the level of car we're in. 2.9, that's the 62. Anyway, the fact that that's happening in a car of this level scrambles the brain, right? And then it'll go all the way up to 200 kilometers an hour in 8.2 seconds, which is a second off a 720S. Where are we heading? Where are we heading? Performance per pound, I compel you to find anything that offers the package that this thing will offer. It's gonna be nuts. Um, having said that, I kind of contradicted myself a little bit there because I don't actually have the official price for you yet. However, this is their sports series car. It's not a super series car. So I would love to hear from you. Questions, please, below anything you want to know because I'm gonna be spending some more time with this car very soon. Uh, and you'll probably see me going up the hill at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in it in a few days time. So if you're there, say hello. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao.